In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a super resolution photo with an extreme high megapixel count, for example, 80 megapixels. And that's all done with a camera, which in my case only shoots 24 megapixels at the first place. If you just want to know how it's done, you can click to the chapter name tutorial down in the timeline. And for the rest of you, 20% club, here's the story. As some of you might know, I sell prints of roller coasters online. And I recently went to Wallaby Belgium and the special thing about Wallaby Belgium is they are currently building a new mega coaster and there was one spot I really wanted to take a picture of which I then was able to do a big printout. To do that usually a 24 megapixel sensor like my Sony a7 Mark III has is plenty enough, but this time I wanted to future-proof and I decided to do something I never did before. The first time I heard about super resolution was like back in 2016 when I stumbled upon a website which uh, allows you to see super resolution photos of Dubai. And the thing which blew me away is we are currently standing out on top of the Burj Khalifa and we can just zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and the picture still looks awesome and um, back in 2016 I was like oh man I want to do that too but I never had the uh, opportunity to do it or or even uh, a reason to do it until and when I was at Wally Beam and uh, it was just like hmm yeah let's try that and so I did Usually what you want to do if you shoot super resolution pictures, which you then merge together, is you want to have a camera with uh, a zoom lens and you want to be on the maximum focal length. So you get the maximum amount of detail from each shot you then stick together to a big picture. But in my case, 200 millimeter wasn't enough. So I took my bad boy 600 mil lens and I shot like 20 sections of the subject I wanted to have. And we are now going to stack those pictures together. So to the tutorial part, we are now in Lightroom and I started an import. So let's do that. Let's import all the pictures I shot of that element. I want to have a super resolution picture of. Let's import that. So we have 17 pictures, which are all shot in 24 megapixels. And as you can see, they are all overlapping a bit. So we can now start to stack them and build up a picture with a higher resolution. And to do that in Lightroom, it's pretty easy. Just select all the pictures which belong to one super resolution picture, do a right click on it and say photo merge and then panorama. Once that's done, the preview will start up and Lightroom will do its magic. We'll figure out which picture goes where. And once that's done, which by the way, can take a few minutes depending on how many pictures you took, it will present you with a preview. Okay, so once Lightroom figured out how to stack everything, it gives us the option to change the projection mode in case it looks off or it wasn't able to stack. But in our case, perspective is right and it looks good to my eye. In case you have some corners which are not filled in, you could, in theory, say let's fill the edges with um, content aware fill but in our case you will see it will not work because we have too many details missing so um the ai just don't know what's going on here and we clearly see that in this part so we are not going to do that but if you did a better job than i did on scanning the entire frame you might be able to use that to fill in the edges in my case that's fine the next thing you could do is you can say all right i don't want to fill in the edges but I want to have a cropped image which uh, has no white spaces so you can click on auto crop but in my case you see the crop isn't really working for me because it's it's cropping off some important aspects of the image so I'm just leaving it as it is and say merge once the merge is done it will now appear in your Lightroom library and we can start to edit the picture. And the reason why I love to do this with Lightroom is because uh, our source material were raw files. We now still can edit the pictures and the colors inside the pictures without any problem. If we would have done it in like uh, Photoshop where we first converted the pictures from, let's say a raw file to a, let's say JPEG where we have some compression, then stitched it together and we would edit it then, we would have less control over our colors. And that's why I love to do it in Lightroom because it all is just within a self-contained 
um, environment. And the nice thing is we still still have like a raw file. In my case, it's not a raw, it's a DNG, but it's basically the same, just another form of container. So the next thing I usually do when uh, I create a super resolution pictures, now I go over the color and the overall looks of it. Okay, so the next thing I then would do is I would do a manual crop and we can either do that using Lightroom or how I'm going to do it using Photoshop. And to do that, I do a right click add it in Photoshop, then Photoshop will fire up and will load our stitched image. By the way, if you want to buy this picture or others, let's go and visit coasterpics.com, which is my website where I do all my roller coaster photography and uh, check it out. Maybe buy a picture and support this channel. So here we are with our picture in Photoshop. So let's do the crop real quick. Uh, in my case, I want to stick to the original uh, ratio. So I hold shift and then do the crop. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Let's say, okay, go for it. So you might see that we are missing a piece down here, but that's not a problem. Since we're in Photoshop, we can use content aware fill. And to do that, we just fill it with content aware and go for it. And that's basically the same as we saw in Lightroom. Just this time it has to fill a way smaller space. And as we just saw, it did an actual good job of doing so. And then we are done. And if you check the size of this file, we will see we are now at a whopping 7,700, almost 7,800 pixel in width and the height of over 10K pixel. So that's roughly 80 megapixels, yeah. So this is a roughly 80 megapixel picture. And with that, you can do pretty much everything in print. So uh, in theory, I could use that picture and print it like onto my wall, one meter high, would be no problem. So this is how I create super resolution pictures of roller coasters when I'm out there and I need an image which is future-proof, which can be used for more than just a little printout. So thanks for watching. Go ahead, check out coasterpicks.com and see if there is anything you like. If so, consider buying it or at least consider subscribing to this channel because this is nearly as helpful as buying something. Just, just nearly, but you get the, you get the idea. So thanks for watching. This is the end card. Over there is a video which is totally random and here is a video where I talk about where exactly I took that picture because that's a guide for taking the best pictures of that roller coaster. All right, I'm Greeny. I see you next time or in a theme park and until then, bye.